Do you want to contribute to our ever-growing e-waste pile, or would you rather have a useful tool? It is your choice. You can choose to use open source software, which is made by people working together to create software for people to use rather than software that's created to drive shareholder value. There are many reasons for using open source software. And today I'm going to show you how you can easily use open source software to keep equipment that you have out of our e-waste stream. Hi, I'm Wade. I've been working with businesses to create complex systems for managing their operations for over 30 years. And I believe a computer is a tool and I believe firmly in open source software that lets you control your own tool rather than give that control out to either Apple or Microsoft, who is going to say when you can continue to use your computer and when you cannot. Today I'll be showing you an older computer running brand new operating system and the magic starts with installing a solid state drive or SSD. So this is not a modern machine. Obviously it's 13 years old and right now this computer is going to be able to run the latest software and be fully supported until 2029. And it is a useful tool or is it, should it go into a landfill? You decide. So here is the 13 year old laptop coming up and ready to roll just like that. Okay, well, I pulled the solid state drive out of that laptop and put it in a USB dock attached to an eight year old laptop so that we could have our screens resolutions match up and give you a more accurate picture of what this would look like. And here we are at the welcome screen for a fresh install of Linux Mint, which I've modified just a little bit. And I could go on about Linux Mint and what a great operating system it is, because it is. It's an amazing piece of work. But, you know, we really don't care that much about what an operating system is. We just want to use our computers. So let me take you on a quick tour of this amazing system that is fully supported until 2029 and will run just fine on a whole bunch of hardware that the major players want to convince you should be landfilled so that you can put more money in their pockets. So a computer is just a tool that we can use and Linux Mint makes it pretty darn simple to do so. Anyone that's worked with Mac or Windows will be pretty familiar as it is and it's really easy to customize to have it work the way that you want it to work. So I'll go over a real quick brief overview of the system now and you'll notice up in the upper right I have the time, the battery charge, uh, our volume control which you can scroll up and down as you see fit. Uh, there's a your wireless networks, printers, if you if you have a printer on the network, it'll just show up here. You have an update manager, Bluetooth, the software I'm using to record this, an open window list. And then on the left, you have what they call a Mint menu, which is kind of like an Apple menu or a Windows Start menu. And I would say it's actually more useful than either one of them. First, because it's laid out really well, and second, because you can completely customize it to have it bring up exactly what you want. But it lists all of your applications, and then it breaks them down by categories, so you can find just what you're looking for. You can create web apps, which are kind of neat. Uh, you have all your administration stuff and preferences, and then you have a favorites thing on the side here, where you have things like the software manager and your preferences again, and a terminal, which most people won't use, the file manager. 
And you have the calculator here, which is something that I put on there. It's as easy as you find whatever program you want to have instant access to, and you just drag it to it. I'll remove it right now, and then you'll see it's not there. To put it there, all I have to do is drag it over there, and there it is. And then at the bottom is very much like an Apple dock that has anything that you want pinned to it or anything that happens to be running. So that's just a real quick overview of the basic interface. And you can see everything makes sense and it's easy to get to. It's a real easy system to work with and you can make it your own. In today's world, we depend on being able to access the internet with a modern browser that is supported throughout the internet and kept up to date. And Mint happens to bundle Firefox with it, so we can easily go to, you know, news, weather, do your e-commerce, banking, whatever we have a modern browser already installed. And of course, another thing that many of us depend on is email. And of course you can do webmail through the browser, but it also comes with a built-in email client and that's called Thunderbird. And it will walk you right through the setup as easy as any other email client. It just works. In addition to web and email, of course they have a bunch of other things that come pre-installed. A lot of people use different Microsoft Office apps. They have something called LibreOffice, which is very similar. It has a spreadsheet program. It has a word processor. It has a presentation manager. There's a database module. There's a drawing module. Um, your typical office stuff, and it will look familiar to anyone who's used an office program. And of course, you can go on the web and use like Office 365. Beyond the initial installed apps, they have a software center that offers all kinds of software to suit your needs. It may not be exactly the same as what you're used to, but chances are there's an app that will do what you need to do. And then of course there's things like, as you see there, Spotify, which is available everywhere, Dropbox, uh, Google Earth. And you can see there's just tons of software applications available to suit whatever you want to do with your computer. Now let's talk a little bit about customizing the system to work as you would like it to work. We can come in to preferences and set a whole bunch of things. Let's take a look at themes, for instance. I've been using a mixed or light theme, and if you prefer a dark, like a lot of people do, we can choose a dark theme and we can change the highlight colors. And then we have a system that looks something like this. Now, another thing that you can do that I have done here, you may notice that the window controls are on the left and there's a thing called windows in the preferences and you can set the buttons up to be on the left like I have. If you're coming from Windows and prefer them on the right, you can have them be on the right. If you wanna go way back to Classic Mac, you can set them up like the Classic Mac used to be. Or if you're a Unix person, you can have them look like Gnome. But I'm gonna stick with left because that's what I'm used to. And the beauty of this is you can set it as you're used to. Now we've talked about the panel that would normally or frequently be at the bottom, but it can be top, 
bottom you can add panels so you can change the size you can show whether they're visible or not if we go down to the bottom here that's i have that set to intelligently hide so that notice if we're if uh, we get out of this and we're back into the word processor we don't see the doc at all unless we come down and there it is there's our running programs there's also if we right click on the panel something called applets and I have an applet that I like to add to all of them that shows all of my open windows and we can also get into workspaces but I'm not going to do that in this video but it's nice to have a menu that you can just choose whatever you're working on and go right to it and to get that it's it's an applet that is called i believe it is called windows quick list and so if i hit the minus sign on that notice it goes away and that's the way that it comes out of the box but you can go to your applets and add it by just highlighting it and clicking the plus sign. In addition to the themes and the way the windows are laid out, there are a number of other ways that you can customize it, but the most common one that people do is to put a background on their desktop, and it comes with a lot of nice pictures. I personally have a picture of my dog on mine, but you can use one of the built-in wallpapers, and it is a nice, attractive look. And one last thing I'll do is just show you the file manager, which is very similar to Mac or Windows. And you can see that it has uh, a sidebar where you can go to common places, your videos, your pictures, all that sort of stuff. You can view it as a list. You can view it as icons. If you hold on the control key and scroll, you can resize it. It's uh, really quite useful. Another thing that I really like about it is that you can hit F3. So with the split pane, you have two windows side by side that can be set up to display differently and different folders. So in this particular case, if I wanted to transfer something to my home folder on the computer, I can just grab it and drop it right over, just like that. So it's a really handy file manager that is not particularly different from what you may be used to on Mac or Windows. Has a few features that are built in that are pretty neat. You can it's got a built-in search that you can search through your whole file system. It's just a really nice piece of work. And of course, we all like to watch videos. I just have to get in one of my dancing since it's so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of what can happen with a 13-year-old laptop. And I believe you would agree that there's really no reason that this has to be e-waste. You may want a new computer, you may have a good use for it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but you very well may be able to use this, and I'm all about getting as much value out of what we buy as we can and protecting the planet and not creating a bunch of e-waste that's completely unnecessary. So if you'd like to extend the life of your equipment or just Get away from all the spying that's going on with, with the big operating systems and, and take control of your own computers. I'm available to help.